I'm excited. <clears throat> I'm excited to be Rick Bennett. All right. Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. You know, The Saints Volume 3 is coming out soon and is the first update in church history in a hundred years. Did you know that back in the 1970s, Dr. Richard Bushman was involved in an update on church history in the 1970s? The project was scuttled, and so Richard will tell us more about his involvement with that project and why it was scuttled. So you won't want to miss this conversation. Check it out. So Richard, can you tell us a little bit about, it seems like you had a role, uh, I believe they were going to do a uh, history of the church back in the 70s. Um, and they started doing it, and then the project got killed, and I think Saints has kind of revived that project, but can you talk about what happened in the 70s uh, and your role with that? Yeah, I uh, I was involved. Uh, we dreamed up the idea of having a new comprehensive history of the church, which had been published in its finished form in 1930. 1980 was approaching, so that would be the 150th anniversary. So it seemed uh, likely that a new comprehensive history would be uh, suitable, especially because there are so many young historians coming along, a lot of new information. So Leonard asked me to do the first volume, which was um, the history of Joseph Smith's life up to 1830. And so I, I produced that and uh, got it in in time for the d deadline. Um, Milt Backman had uh, submitted his volume, which was on uh, the Kirtland period, and his went through and was going to be published. Mine got approval from the church historian and his staff but somewhere on the, along the line, uh, someone decided this was not suitable. And so, I mean, the whole project. So I, I went with Leonard once when I was in Salt Lake to Deseret Book, where he got the news for the first time that the project was being canceled. And this was difficult because we had all received a substantial advance and uh, everyone was laboring away. Um, and to have the, this project, uh, scuttled really broke Leonard's heart. I never felt as bad about it as he did because, uh, stories like that leads to a lot of complications. You're in the situation where if the church reads a manuscript and doesn't like it and wants to, uh, have it changed, they then come off as censors. You know, they're dictating to the authors what they should write. And that's uncomfortable for the authors, it's uncomfortable for the church, and it's unseemly. On the other hand, if they just let the authors do whatever they want, then, you know, who knows what you'll get. And so um, it's, it's almost a very difficult situation. And I don't like to be in that situation. I want to write what I want to write. So I felt okay about canceling the series. And uh, we all went off and got our books published by other uh, uh, presses. I went to University of Illinois Press. They at first were hesitant to publish it because it struck them as very much an apologetic work. And so uh, they were unsure. Johns Hopkins had turned it down for that reason. But uh, they finally, University of Illinois finally sent the manuscript off to, I think it was George Marsden, but uh, some eminent scholar. And he wrote back, he says, well, if we publish books from a Marxist point of view, from a gay point of view, why not from a Mormon point? <laughs> oh, I came under the weirdos category of, of authors. And uh, anyway, the, the book uh, got published. 
And what was the name of the book? Joseph Smith and the Beginnings of Mormonism. Okay. That was 19. Uh, I think it was 84 that it came out. Oh, in 1984. So at the time it was seen as a too apologetic because I know you you have another book, Rough Stone Rolling, that I think gets labeled as both too apologetic and too critical. Uh, how much would how much of the first book uh, is that's too apologetic in Rough Stone Rolling? Would you say? Well, well, the interesting thing about it is that there were parts of that book that were a little disturbing to people. One was that I talked about how the Smith family were money diggers, which the church had always denied. Um, and the church probably needed more that back in the 70s, right? They didn't. They were uneasy about it. That may have been why <clears throat> why they didn't publish it under Leonard Arrington's church history office. But and it's too critical then. <laughs> yeah, 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 and I'd raised some questions about uh, how the Melchizedek priesthood was restored, because I was just going by what I found in the in the sources. But after it came out or it came out right in the middle of all the flap having to do with the, uh, uh, all the scandal over the discovery of the McClellan papers and, you know, the business about a, a, a toad appearing, uh, all the Mark Hoffman scandals and, uh, where suddenly the church as a, um, or originating in magic culture was, uh, becoming more and more evident. And I, my book proved to be very useful because I had already talked about all those things, but in a way that was, um, basically sympathetic to Joseph Smith. So eventually the church was very grateful for the book when they sent out a, a, a set of 14 books to libraries around the world. Mine was one of the 14 books that they included in, in their group. So, um, anyway, <laughs> uh, it was a strange combination of circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it. Um, who were some of the other authors that were commissioned to write the first church history that got scuttled besides you? Oh, boy, it's, uh, right now my memory is failing me. Milt Beckman was one. Top Alexander was a one. I think Davis Bitten was, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, Jim Allen. Jim Allen, yeah. So uh, um, they're sort of the people who are hanging around those days doing church history. Nick. Okay. And were all those books eventually published through other no, presses? No, uh, oh. the authors didn't really pursue them, but uh, some were. Some were, okay. They was. Well, it's kind of a good little segue into uh, Rough Stone Rolling, and, I, and I'm also curious with your uh, expertise on New England, can I call it Yankee culture and, you know, those those early farming, was that useful in in... Joseph Smith Sr.'s, uh, in the research for Joseph Smith Sr. and Joseph Smith Jr. towards Rough Stone Rolling? It really was. Uh, in fact, I got interested in farming when I was doing uh, Joseph Smith at the beginnings because uh, I felt like I, I wanted to sort of understand the Smith's economic situation. So uh, I started, you know, just doing some research, his background, but became so interested in it that it became a major research interest. And uh, that's how come I ended up publishing that book uh, on 18th century farming. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the critical reception? It seems like some people love it. Some people call it an anti-Mormon book. It was sold at Deseret Book. Uh -huh. <laughs> can you talk about all the different receptions it's had? It was uh, quite unusual um, uh, in the first place, uh, Deseret Book did 
carry it. They had a big signing party. I remember sitting there all afternoon one time signing copies of the book. People would come by, come through buying two or three copies to send to their kids. Um, so there was that. Uh, there was no official church response. I thought maybe someone would read it and they would say, oh, this is awful. And pass the word down and they would just get a negative uh, um, impact. Um, though, but at first, the Seminaries and Institute System, CES, was uh, opposed to the book. They thought it was disruptive and troublesome. So uh, I could not speak to uh, seminary students. I could speak to seminary faculty, but not to students. And uh, there were some very negative things said about the book. Uh, that all then disappeared over, over time because it came out on the eve of all the flap over church history, all the troublesome things about the book of Eber. Abraham and Joseph Smith, uh, you know, marrying a young girl. And so uh, the book turned out to be kind of helpful because it really dealt with those issues, uh, which hadn't really been uh, treated in, in other books. So once again, it's like uh, Beginnings of Mormonism it turned out to be more useful because the, the times um, I demanded it. And over time, you know, I got... Right away, I got very good comments from Elder Ballard and Elder Oaks, who said they liked it. So my general opinion, feeling was, and I was told this by Elder Oaks, some people really didn't like it, but he did. And that pleased me because it meant people would choose for themselves rather than there being kind of an, an official opinion. Uh, so, you know, I've heard stories of people who joined the church because of the book and others who left the church because of the book. <laughs> because it did disrupt the standard story. And that was shocking to people. You know, they read our history like they did scriptures, you know, fixed in stone, the word of God. And when they found out things that they didn't believe in, it, it really uh, was disruptive. So uh, it's had a checkered history. <laughs> Well, great. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Drs. Richard and Claudia Bushman. In our next conversation, we'll learn more about Claudia and why she chose to pick her topics about women in history. When I went to graduate school, I decided what I was going to do was study uh, women. And I was the first person that ever had thought of that to myself. Now, that, I don't really say I was the pioneer, but um, and here I was a woman Women didn't get that much attention in the past. Um, all right, I'm going to think about women and ordinary women, women of, uh, that were like me, and I would, could use my own experience as a housewife and the kinds of things I'd done. That would give me a measure against those. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please subscribe to patreon.com slash gospel tangents for just $5 a month. Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash gospel tangents. If you'd like to watch the entire video, you can subscribe at YouTube, Patreon, or on my website at gospeltangents.com and click the yellow subscribe button for just $8 a month. PDF transcripts are just $10 a month, and you can get those on patreon.com slash gospeltangents or on my website. I'll send those to you as soon as I've finished completing it. If you'd like to get a paperback and PDF, just subscribe for $20 a month at either Patreon or on my website. Individual paperbacks are available at Amazon.com. Just do a search for Gospel Tangents interview and you can find all of our past interviews there. Show your Gospel Tangents pride by purchasing a t-shirt on our website at gospeltangents.com slash shop. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents. You can get our latest updates by friending me at Facebook, or you can also follow our page at facebook.com slash gospeltangents. Become an insider and you can see the newest videos. Follow us on Twitter at Gospel Tangents. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here we've got some of our great videos. Thanks again.